Hello, good morning. I hope you are fine. Today I'd like to talk to you about dreaming big and starting small. Have you ever had some plans to start something and you were waiting until you got everything together until you, before you started? Well, that principle is outdated. From the time of Jesus, I mean, it's been outdated for over 2,000 years. Today, in the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 10, from verses 1 to 7, we see that Jesus begins to prepare his apostles to send them out. In fact, he chose the 12, and of course, Matthew gives us the names of the 12 apostles, and then Jesus sends them out, giving them very clear instructions to begin from the 12 tribes of Israel. And some people have interpreted this to mean that Jesus initially thought that it kingdom of God was only for the Jews and so on and so forth. That's all a complete misunderstanding of the text. So here are three things I'd like to share with you in this text. The first one is, of course, dream big and start small. Jesus wanted to bring salvation to all of humanity. He wanted to, his mission to be known across the world. But he didn't wait until his apostles were ready. He didn't wait until it was time to take on the entire world. He started from the 12 tribes of Israel. So in choosing his apostles, he told them, start with the 12 tribes of Israel. Don't go to Samaritan towns. Don't go to pagan territories. Just focus on the 12 tribes of Israel. For now, go only to the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. Why would he do that? Well, the reason is simple. Because most great things start small. And unless you start small, you might be punching above your weight and you might lose uh, you might lose interest, you might lose motivation. So it's important to start right where you are. If you cannot fructify 5,000 euros, you might not be able to fructify 500,000 euros. If you cannot fructify 1 million naira, you might not be able to fructify 10 million naira. You see, it's important to have big dreams, to want to do great things, but only very few people start from up there. In climbing a ladder, you might start from the, stop, from the first step. Every ladder has to be climbed from the first step down, up, 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 and up. So that's the way Jesus also did his ministry, and that's something that we can learn from him. The second thing that we can learn from this text of today is that as soon as you are ready to start, as soon as you're ready to start your project, you must invest in your team. You must invest in your team. Jesus chose 12 people. That was very strategic because there were 12 tribes of Israel, so one person to one tribe. But Besides that, Jesus spent time with these 12 for three years. He was training them until he sent them out to preach. Child of God, when you want to start something, you must decide who your team is going to be. Sometimes you are the only one in your team. But even then, it's important to train yourself on the thing that you want to do. It's important to have team meetings. It's important to invest in your team because your most important uh, factor of production is going to be you. You are your biggest factor of production. Labor is the most important factor of production. So who is in your team is very important. Jesus chose only 12. I mean, there were so many people following him. He would have chosen thousands of people at the same time, but he chose 12 because those are the 12 that he was willing to train at that time. The third and the final thing I'd like to say is that when Jesus had chosen the 12, Matthew says, he chose the first among them, the first among equals, Peter. Very clearly showing us that there was a leader in the team. Child of God, a team without a leader is like a chicken without its head. It just moves everywhere. It doesn't achieve much. So if you are choosing your team, you must very clearly identify who is the leader of this team. Who is going to be in charge of what in this company? Who is going to do what in this church? It's very important to delegate functions and roles to people so that people know exactly what they have to do. You see, unless you describe the job clearly, people might not know what they have to do. Unless you designate who is in charge of a group, everyone might just be acting in confusion. So Jesus not only clearly demarcates the territory that they have to go to, but he also very clearly demarcates who is the leader of the team. It was going to be Peter, the first among equals. And that's why the church for over 2,000 years has kept standing because from the very beginning, from its very inception, Jesus was very strategic in setting up what he wanted to do, in delineating the territory, in dreaming big and starting small, and in clearly designating the leader who was going to lead the team to its achievement. I hope you have learned something from this text this morning. I pray that God, the Almighty Father, will bless and keep you and help you to realize all of your projects, He who is Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.